What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna break down the new Squarespace 7.1 header styles update. And I'm gonna go over all the different header styles settings and which one you should use to create which looks. So to access the new header styles, we can edit the page, edit the header, and then click this style tab. And we now have multiple options within the style tab. So I'll start with theme, and this is the same as it was before where we can apply a color theme to our header and we can just change the colors. Uh, and if you wanna change the color settings for a color theme, uh, you can go to the color panel in the site styles. So I'll save that, I'll go to site styles, I'll go to colors, and we've applied the lightest one color theme. So if I wanna update a color there, I can edit that color theme and it'll inherit the section background as the header background we can change the site title link colors here uh, and they'll update. So that's the site title um, and we can change the navigation link colors as well. And all those things will update here. So again, the theme setting is you're just applying a colored theme and you will have already set up the color styles for the color theme in the color panel. So the next option is dynamic and this is the same as the transparent toggle that we used to use. So if you wanna have a transparent header overlaying a banner image, then choose dynamic. And this will just have the header inherit the color theme of the first section on the page. So if the first section has a really dark background, then the header styles for that section, you can set them up to be light colors. So you'll never have to worry about your header like not being visible, even though it's transparent. Um, so again, if you want to have your header be transparent over banner images, then use the dynamic setting. And the nice thing is with this update, we now get a border style that we can set on dynamic headers. So if I click border, you can toggle it on. You can see I have this thin white line down here. You can change the thickness to the presets or click the three dots and choose a custom value. And you can also choose whether you want it to be on all sides, just the top and bottom, just the top or just the bottom. When I'm doing borders on headers, generally I'll just select it to be only on the bottom. So let's go to the new setting, the solid setting. So the first change that you can make is you can change the transparency, which is cool. Um, and it allows you to add a blurred background now. So this is like a frosted glass header effect. And it gives you a little note that the background, the blurred background will only appear if you have some sort of transparency on the element. So just make sure you have it less than 100% in order to see the blur. And now you can drag the blur up or down um, and it just gives a nice effect, especially when it's a fixed header because you can see the content scrolling below it. So um, the blurred background, that's definitely new. We now with the solid setting, we have the ability to change the header background color right in the header settings, which is nice. Instead of having to go through to the color theme, uh, if you choose the solid he header setting, you can change these settings right in this tab. So very cool. We can change the background color and we can change the navigation color. We can't change the button color, however. So if you do want to change your button color, what you have to do is I found this to work. You go to theme and then just select a theme that has a button color that you want. Um, so let's say I want this black button with green text. I'll then go back and I'll go back to the solid setting and it'll keep the button color that you previously set up. So that's the best way that I've found how to do it um, because there is no button color setting in this panel. So we, we talked about the blurred background already. That's very cool. Uh, we also have the border that we can turn on and we now have a drop shadow setting that we can turn on as well. So we can change the color of the drop shadow here. Generally, I leave it black. The spread is basically how much the shadow is like expanded or contracted. The distance is how far the shadow is from the bottom of the element. So if you want it really far away, you can drag that up. Um, I usually leave the distance pretty low and the blur is pretty straightforward. It's just the amount of blur below the shadow. So very cool effect, um, nice for creating some separation between the header and the website content. Oh, one thing that I wanna note is um, you might be tempted to just drag down the opacity all the way and like, let's turn off this board background. So you might be tempted to create transparent headers this way, 
So the problem with just trying to create a transparent header using the solid settings is that the link color isn't going to update on various pages, depending on the color of the first section theme. So actually, I'm going to change it back to this color and hit save. So the header text, it is legible on this page, but if we go to the workshops page, you can see that the header text is the same color as the background. So that's why you can't use this setting to create transparent overlaid headers, because eventually at some point you're going to have a conflict between the navigation color and the color of the first section on the page. So again, if you want to create a transparent overlay, make sure that you're choosing dynamic because the navigation color will update. So just wanted to point out that note there. But if you want to have just some sort of solid header setting, um, then definitely the solid setting I think is the way to go because it does give you access to this further customization that you can add with the blurred background, the border, or the drop shadow. Finally, we can look at the gradient. Uh, and the gradient's pretty simple. Um, it just allows you to add a little gradient that goes from a certain color that you choose here down to transparent. So this will be clearer if we go to the home page. So if I edit the site header, go to style, I have gradient selected. I'm gonna turn off the blurred background uh, and I'm gonna turn up the opacity of the gradient. And you can see it starts from this tan color that I've selected. Maybe I'll go darker so it's easier to see. Uh, and it goes from that darker color all the way to transparent. Now I'm gonna wanna update the navigation color just to make sure that it's legible. Something like that. Um, and you, could, you still have all the other options of the blurred background, the border, and the drop shadow when you have this gradient selected. So it's sort of like a transparent header, except it starts from a solid color and then gradiates down. I don't even know if that's a word. It uh, fades down into transparency. So those are all of the different header options that you have now. Theme and dynamic are what we had before, but we now have gradient and solid. Um, I'm really digging the solid option just because it gives you a lot more controls over adding, you know, a blurred background, a border, and a drop shadow to your header. And remember, you can't change the button color in here, but if you go to theme and then change the button color to something else through the theme and then go back to solid, then that's the best way to change the button color. Music